right? And in SAP Tech Fundamentals, uh, I had requested to read chapters one, two, three, and four, right? Um, and we will actually not not start with Tech Fundamentals because that was the reading. Most of what is there in chapters one, two, three, and four are actually in the web admin book one as well. So formally when we start, we're going to start with SAP Web Application Server Administration one. This is where we are going to spend 70% of our time on this PDF. This is the core of NetWeaver ABAP stack. Right. Um, so SAP Tech Fundamentals, um, this is what your homework was. If you have not read, you should still read this when you go back. Um, but the chapters were on what makes up the SAP Business Suite, right? And my question was around that as well. Um, And then the second chapter was around what makes up the NetWeaver suite, right? And here my question was around this specific diagram, right? So it means I'm not asking things from thin air, right? The question which Fred answered for us was from here. And which product do you think he missed? No. He mentioned mobile infrastructure. He missed one of them, MDM, Master oh. Data Management, right? And I, you know, but he, since he remembered the others, which, you know, I was very proud of, I didn't mention anything, but I wanted to come back to this diagram and, you know, make sure that you guys understand, number one, what are the products? How are they mapped to different layers of NetWeaver? And that, you know, that there are six key products of which I were mentioned. And the third and the fourth chapter is around SAP's release strategy, you know, what different products are coming to the market. And the Fourth one is simply navigation, right? Navigation, you know, I'm not going to go through and teach you navigation. I just want you to read on how to go back and forth, log in, log out from the SAP GUI. That's why this was also given as homework right? uh, in the introduction class. So you guys will, if you have not done, still go back and do these four chapters. And now, formally, we'll start with was was stands for web application server administration one right and we are going to start from the first chapter which is around what is an sap system right and the first chapter conceptual conceptually is a difficult one because it will differentiate between a system, an instance, a landscape, and you will continue to struggle with this for a few weeks, but eventually it will settle in, right? Um, okay. So, and as I go through these chapters, what you're going to see is that I'm not going to go line by line. I'm going to obviously spend time on all images, figures, and diagrams. Uh, specific things, you know, which we need to learn, and then some exercises, right? Um, as we go through the course, just to give you a feel, um, a feel of things, that there are um, Um, 
So there are eight key exercises starting from day two, that means today and tomorrow, right? So today we'll consider day one, day two, the next week, right? So, <clears throat> so these are the eight case studies. They're going to, uh, you know, some of them are case studies, some of them are just pure exercises, which are going to be uploaded to Yahoo Groups, right? And which is what we're going to be doing in the class, right? A uh, lot of focus is going to be on these eight, and they are set up by different days, right? Okay, so here we are going to concentrate on what does an SAP system mean, right? And the SAP system consists of the components in the graphic. The graphic, we're going to come to it, it's on the next page, where there is exactly one database and one or more SAP instances, right? A single database, one or more SAP instances. There is one exception to this, which is supply chain management solution from SAP, which is the only application which I have seen, and which only application from SAP standpoint as well, which has got two databases, right? One application, two backend databases. One is your traditional OLTP database, could be Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, UDB, and the other is the ODBMS, Object Oriented Database Management System, not an RDBMS, ODBMS, called LiveCache, which is based upon SAP's SAP DB technology. And we're going to spend some time on that as well as as we go through uh, as we go through the material. Um, Um. All right. Uh, James, I, I know we have been trying to reach you for last one week, so if you're going to be attending the course, please make sure that you converse with them all, right? Um, I don't want to be rude, but at the same time, I want to make sure that, you know, uh, we follow the right protocol for registration. Okay, good, thanks. Um, the instance, there, there are going to be multiple instances. Uh, the instance that together with the database the SAP instance that together with the database forms a runnable SAP system is called the central instance. That means this is the instance which is the most critical of all instances and you at least need to have this instance without which you will not have a operational or runnable SAP system. That instance is called the central instance and we will see that there are certain requirements for that instance. And there has to be a central instance in every SAP system. You cannot have one without a central instance. If there is a system which only has one SAP instance, which ought to be the central instance, then that system is called a central system. And typically all non-production systems outside of maybe a performance testing system and a high-end quality assurance system would all be central systems because you don't need the scalability in those systems to have multiple SAP instances. Right. And now let's uh, look at the um, diagram. So in this diagram, this is a diagram of an SAP system. Uh, it has got exactly one database. This is the database, right? So one database instance, which would be known by a three-character SID. Um, 
All databases uh, typically let you have a system ID, which is three character. SAP also lets you have a system ID, which is three characters. And that's why they also recommend, even if the database supports more than three characters, use only three characters and make it the same as the SAP SID. So the short form is SID, S-I-D, or system ID. And here on the right hand side they're showing four SAP instances connected to one database instance to form an SAP system, right? One of them, which from this diagram we can't figure out, one of them is the central instance. Um, what they also say is that within a company, that means within a customer, within a client, you do not want any two SAP systems to have the same SID. That means you need to have a uniqueness in the SID. Um, once you have that uniqueness, um, you guarantee that you're not going to run into any issues as multiple SAP systems talk to each other. Um, Elements of an SAP system, right, uh, outside of what's mentioned here at a high level, um, right, it obviously needs to have a database, which is mentioned here. It needs to have within the database, especially if you have installed a dual stack web application server, that means it's got both the ABAP stack and the Java stack. SAP supports two stacks a J2EE Java stack and a traditional, which has been their bread and butter, the ABAP stack. So the database needs to have two schemas. It needs to have the ABAP schema and the Java schema. Um, which is which is critical. Um, and No, schema is um, different than stack, and let me show you something here. I'm connecting to the back end now, uh, which is Saraswati, right, which is where SD1 is installed. Right. Um, right, this is the back end of SD1. Um, and what I'm going to do here is Aura SD1, like SD1 ADM, is the SAP administrator, SID ADM. Aura SD1 is the DBA. the DBA user, right? So remember SD1 ADM and Aura SD1, right? Aura SD1 for the Oracle DBA, right? Um, 